Is autism caused by mitochondrial dysfunction? I would say yes, unequivocally. So surprisingly to a lot of people, that, that theory has been around for a long time. There's a the, lot of theories around regarding autism spectrum disorder. There are. And mitochondria are the way to tie them all together. People talk about vaccines. People talk about toxins. People talk about infections in mothers. People talk about dietary patterns. People talk about exposure to acetaminophen causing autism. All of those can be integrated through mitochondrial biology. So you do think that vaccines cause autism through mitochondrial dysfunction? So I'm not going to go so far. I'm not going to dive into the controversy of vaccines and vaccination. But what I will say is this, because the evidence for this is clear and unequivocal. Very high levels of inflammatory responses are associated with dramatically elevated risk of autism and most other mental disorders. So we have numerous animal models during fetal development or early life where researchers will inject the animals with um, lipopolysaccharide, which induces an inflammatory reaction. And that results in mitochondrial dysfunction, which then can increase the odds that that animal will show symptoms of autism or other kind of mental disorders. Um, we also know it from human data. So mothers getting infections during pregnancy have elevated risk of those kids being autistic. Um, do vaccines cause an increase in inflammatory reaction? Yes, they do. Is there a range of inflammatory reaction depending on the person. There is. So in theory, I find it hard to say in no uncertain terms that it would be impossible for a vaccine to contribute to the development of autism. I don't, I don't see how any good scientist could say that. Say that Vaccines don't contribute to autism. That, that, that it's impossible, that it's impossible for that vaccines it... to contribute to the development of autism. I don't think that's possible. With that said, I am going to go on the record and be very clear and unequivocal. Getting measles is a hell of a lot more toxic to human health and childhood health than getting a measles vaccine. There is zero doubt in my mind about that. So I am pro-vaccine for the most part. Even with this slight risk, if you take, if you eat nuts, is there a risk you could die? There is. You could be allergic to nuts. You could have an anaphylactic reaction. Is that possible? Yes. Do we have evidence of that? Yes. Am I willing to go on record and say nobody should ever eat nuts because of that possible rare reaction? No, I'm not. So, so just what I'm hopeful with, with that particular issue. So when parents have a child that appears to be neurotypical, gets a vaccination or has COVID or has another infection or whatever, and then they notice, whoa, my kid is different. Something's happened. Or they send the kid in for surgery. Surgery has complications. Kid is exposed to a lot of anesthesia as a result. Kid comes back and isn't the same. Seems to be different. What I would say is that if people can wrap their brains around the science of what's happening, we can actually intervene at those points. We don't need to just wait and allow this to progress to a life of disability and autism. We can do something about those situations. We can intervene using metabolic mitochondrial treatment strategies to help the person regain his or her health. So coming back to the bigger picture of autism, I would say that 
you know, the, the mitochondrial theory of autism was first proposed in like 1986. It's nothing new. We have an abundance of evidence that people with autism have metabolic problems in their brains and or bodies. The problem is that metabolic problems can have lots of different causes, as we've been talking about. It could be a bad diet, but it could also be stress and trauma. It could also be an infection. It could be a hormonal imbalance. It could be poor sleep. It could be drug and alcohol. So lots of things can cause metabolic dysfunction. So there's not a one-size-fits-all cause. And we need to wrap our brains around that and accept that. It's obvious and it's a fact. But yet people are still searching for, well, what's the single cause of autism? Because we've got this algorithm and we've got this diagnostic label. The diagnostic label says autism is one thing. Therefore, it must have one cause. And so we're spinning our wheels trying to find this one cause when any decent researcher or clinician should already know there isn't one cause. There are numerous causes. Yeah, but, you know... You said that vaccine inflammation leads to mitochondrial dysfunction, which could then lead to autism. Yes. Right? <clears throat> that is the unifying link. And again, the reason that's helpful is because we can intervene by identifying the myriad of contributing causes. Right. But there's a lot of things that can cause inflammation, <clears throat> especially in a child that's exposed that who is supposed to mount inflammatory responses secondary to different antigens right um and but this one vaccine you're saying increases inflammation more than they're used to which causes med causes mitochondrial dysfunction which then causes autism you know versus versus some of these other things that they're exposed to that call that cause inflammation yeah so so we know that having a serious infection that leads to hospitalization in children is highly associated with increased risk for a wide range of mental disorders, including autism. So if your kid is hospitalized for a serious infection, doesn't matter what it is. If you have a kid who's hospitalized for a serious infection, he or she is at greater risk for developing a wide range of mental disorders. The most common mental disorder after that is actually OCD. Um, but autism, schizophrenia, learning disorders, all sorts of problems can happen. And what I'm saying is that there are kids who are vulnerable going into that situation, just like the soldier. Some soldiers are going in kind of resilient. Other soldiers had horrible adverse childhood experiences. If you have those two soldiers right next to each other, they both experience the exact same traumatic event on the battlefield. The one with adverse childhood experiences is much more likely to come out with PTSD than the one who went in resilient. So, so some people would look at that situation and say, well, it was the trauma on the battlefield that caused the PTSD. And I would argue, yes. That was the thing that pushed him over the edge, but it was all of the other stuff that happened to him before that that led up to it, that made him vulnerable. So same deal with a kid with, a, with an infection or a vaccination or anything else, that if a kid is coming to the table vulnerable already, then something might push them over the edge. Last question regarding autism, because we could go on all day about this, right? Um, has have risk factors been shown to predispose to autism early in life, trauma, metabolic disorders, anything else that you've described that causes metabolic dysfunction? Has that been shown to predispose <laughs> to uh, autism spectrum disorder? Yeah, so the um, so rates of autism, for people who don't know, rates of autism have quadrupled in the last 20 years. Fourfold increase. If you look at the CDC data, that's what they have on their website right now in 2023. Fourfold increase. How on earth can we understand skyrocketing prevalence of autism? Well, let me share another statistic with you. 
If you are a woman who is obese, you have double the risk of having an autistic child. If you are a woman who is both obese and diabetic, you have a fourfold increased risk of having an autistic child. If you're a man who is obese, you have double the risk of having an autistic child. So all these people are scratching their heads. Where's all this autism coming from? It's not the vaccines that we need to worry about. At the same time, the rates of obesity and diabetes are skyrocketing in men and women who are having kids, we are going to see skyrocketing rates of neurodevelopmental and psychiatric disorders. And when you look at these kids, even the kids who aren't autistic, where do you think the skyrocketing rates of depression, anxiety, suicidality, bipolar, everything else is coming in children? That too. This isn't about fat shaming. It's not about wagging our finger at the overweight woman. It's about helping, trying to understand why does she have mitochondrial dysfunction that is resulting in obesity? What happened to her? What is happening to her biology and physiology? And we need to address the root problem. And a pill, an SSRI, is not going to do it. And a stimulant is not going to do it. Those are symptomatic treatments at best. If we address the root problem, not only can we help that woman, but we can help that woman, woman's children. And, and we can improve long-term outcomes across a wide range of mental and metabolic disorders.